Welcome to the next chapter. This is digital forensic. So let's look at the four words. Today, computers are used in the whole world. The pervasiveness of computers has led to ever increasing number of computers related court cases, which is true, and such as electronic commerce disputes and also the cybercrime. So these are the two main areas. Okay, the uh, e-commerce dispute cybercrime so in the process of judging or handling the disputes of all these uh, cases a new form of lit litigation evidence has emerged so we need some kind of a new evidence this is what we call digital evidence so the characteristics that distinguish digital evidence and digital uh, forensic from traditional physical evidence and forensic method poses a new research topic in this field of law and computer science okay so this is true so uh, traditionally we have the uh, physical evidence uh, and also the physical uh, forensic method so now today we talk about the digital uh, we're in the digital era so we have a digital evidence and we need a digital kind of a forensic okay so this document describes the digital forensic process and also presents the technology and tools used in the digital forensics. So let's look at the objective. Upon completion of this course, we should be able to describe the process of digital forensics, uh, to be able to describe digital forensic technologies and also the tools used. So these are the contents. We will talk about uh, cyber crimes, we talk about overview of digital forensics, and also we'll talk about the uh, process. So cybercrime. What's the definition of cybercrime? Okay, so definition is in violation of legal regulations, a bad actor deliberately invades computer information systems, okay, or compromise the functionality of a system and its related data and also the application. Okay, so this is very straightforward. Uh, the invaders tries to uh, compromise okay our information uh, in, in the digital forms and also to produce or uh, disseminates computer viruses okay try to implant uh, the malware viruses ransomware etc etc and affects the normal operation of a system and causes detrimental detrimental effects okay so this is will cause detrimental effects as well. That means uh, it causes the, uh, the the process of the uh, uh, of a normal day-to-day -day, uh, operation. So cybercrimes usually takes on two forms. The first, they use computers to store information related to criminal activities. Okay, this is one form to store something uh, related to criminal activities. And also the direct use of computers as a crime tools to launch crimi criminal activities. Okay, so this is the two forms. So let's look at the characteristics of a cyber crimes. So over the past decades or so, the number of cyber crimes has risen years on years. Cyber crimes generally has the following characteristics. So first of all, professional means. Okay, so cybercrime today has become professionalism. They're no longer just um, a few guys, you know, a, a, a hobby kind of a, a kind of a activities, and sometimes it can be quite professionally uh, being done. Okay, uh, covert forms. Okay, so they will do it uh, in a very secretive uh, manner. Um, transnational. Okay, so sometimes uh, the attack can be happened, and it's it's a, it's a actually an effort of a team of a multinational instead of just one com one country, and uh, the attack can be across various kind of countries to countries, and uh, huge potential damages. Okay, so yes, this is one of the very big possibilities. Uh, many members and lowing age. Okay, so the uh, cyber criminal. The uh, attackers, uh, invaders, are not nowadays getting younger and younger, and also complex and diverse motive. They have different kind of motive. 
some be because they want to attack somebody because of the because of the money some be attack because of to defame somebody or maybe because of a political reason so let's look at the uh, the motives so what are the motives of a cyber crimes okay so they are very complicated and very diverse so first of all prestige people who want to prove their competency and win respects and recognition from their counterparts okay so let's say for example hacker a and hacker b or maybe team a and team b they just want to show off to to be able to recognize to win the respect and let people recognize okay you are the best you can actually hack into a very uh, secret a very difficult government uh, military kind of a, de a defense or a website you know so they just want to to show to prove themselves so another kind is revenge okay so maybe suspended dismissed demoted and unjustly treated people who take revenge to cause a maximum impact okay so sometimes uh, employer fires an employee and some of the employees they were suspended demoted and they were so angry and they want to revenge back to the company ignorance so people who are learning about computers and network perform misoperation or accidentally discovered vulnerabilities that may affect the data okay now this could be one of the reason ignorance uh, profit okay so i think this is probably one of the the big motives for most of the people so people who are employed to intrude into target system in to steal or temper with information and huge financial gain okay so this is actually one of the the huge uh, area most of the hackers they want to hack into a uh, financial system in order to to gain profit okay and of course we have the political action uh, destructive theft of intelligence and also information warfare so uh, this is to just try to steal intelligence information from countries and also the uh, warfare information right to gain political uh, uh, to gain the political wins and also to trick somebody okay so this is <laughs> somebody who tries to to uh, to show off their skill to try to hack into somebody's friend's machine and try to perform remote control over their their mouse or keyboard and things like that all right so let's look at the forms of cyber crimes so cyber crimes takes the various forms the common forms are as listed as below so the first of all is the uh, trojan horse trojan horse the backdoor software the viruses the worm the ddos attack now all these attacks uh, we have actually uh, mentioned in the previous uh, slides and yeah so these are actually hackers okay internal and external information leakage okay so this is uh, could be done by the internal uh, staff right so let's look at the overview of the digital forensics so now we know those the, the problem of why somebody would want to commit such a cyber crime uh, so now we look at the uh, digital forensic so this is the overview of the digital forensic so first of all digital forensic involve digital evidence so digital evidence is an information stored or transmitted in the binary forms or you can call it the digital forms during the operation of a computer and the computer systems um, computer and computer system is used in a court case okay so we have to present the binary uh, data uh, as an evidence so digital evidence is also known as electronic evidence and also known as computer evidence okay now sometimes it might not be a computer it could be a mobile it could be mobile phones smartphones it could be the tablets so there are many w names for this so digital evidence is the i think is the most proper one so well, what kind of uh, evidence can it be um, so for example it can be a text text file or maybe a log files okay it could be appear as a text it could be uh, some graph it could be some images it could be some animation audio or probably a video as an evidence okay so source of the digital evidence so where does all this 
uh, evidence come from? Where do they come from? So primarily, we can categorize into three categories. So the first is digital evidence related to modern communication technologies. So the keyword here is communication. So example like uh, the digital data, the fax, the data, the mobile phones, audio records. Okay. So when somebody make a conversation over the mobile phones, uh, all this uh, recorded conversation, uh, chat history, okay, SMS history, uh, the WhatsApp history, and etc. etc. Now digital evidence related to other modern information technologies such as broadcasting, television, and films. So this is about information technologies. So such as the video that's recorded. Uh, the movies, or maybe the TV series, okay, or maybe it could be the uh, news broadcasting uh, channel which publish a kind of uh, information or things like that. And finally, we have the digital evidence related to computer technologies or maybe the networking technologies. So, for example, like the one that we just mentioned in the previous class, in the previous slides, which is like the operating system log files, the event viewers, uh, network monitoring traffics, uh, data operation uh, records, the browser cache, the cookies, and etc. etc. All these are possible of the source of the digital evidence. So let's look at what the typical characteristic of a digital evidence. So these are a couple of uh, uh, characteristics. So first of all, Fabricated, fabricated. Attackers use hackers' method to invade computer system and steal password in order to arbitrarily tamper with electronic data, making it difficult to validate the evidence. So they actually modified the evidence to make it hard to trace back the original information. Okay. Um, shapeless. Unlike traditional evidence, which can be directly seen, heard, or touched, digital evidence is stored optically, electronic, electronically, or maybe magnetically forms into a hard drive or maybe tape drive. Okay, so it's shapeless; it's, it cannot be seen. Okay, and also dynamic and vivid. So digital evidence can reflect a dynamic and continuous process that vividly, vividly reproduce the scene. Okay. So this is uh, something that digital evidence, uh, one of the characteristics. And uh, vulnerable and also fragile. Uh, digital evidence can may be easily compromised during the generation and transmission due to the dependence on the electronic digital devices such as computers. This may damage or even prevent the use of digital evidence. Okay, So because of the, of, uh, this is a digital evidence. So uh, during the transmission, how do we copy out the uh, information from one hard disk to another machine, or maybe to another drive? So this is something which is quite uh, vulnerable. And sometimes during the process of copying, we pr we probably might uh, amend the uh, some of the uh, attributes of the uh, information, uh, such as the date and the time, or maybe the last access of the uh, the file. And that would probably uh, jeopardize the, uh, the the investigation process. Okay. Um, and also diverse. Okay. So digital evidence is not a single piece of data, image, or sound. It could be a combination of data, image, sound, graph, animation, and etc. etc. So it could be a combination of a couple of uh, things to compose uh, an evidence. Uh, not like uh, physical evidence. We you know is very straightforward. A piece of cloth is a piece of cloth, okay. And also high tech, uh, digital evidence depends heavily on computer and storage technologies. Without the high tech equipment, digital evidence cannot be saved, or it cannot be easily tra be transmitted. Now we will discuss some of the tools or the hardware tools that can actually preserve or can be uh, we can duplicate the uh, digital evidence and to preserve the original content. So. Next, we look at the uh, the concept of uh, computer forensic. So once we know about the source, the characteristics of uh, the digital uh, uh, evidence, so now we, we let's talk about the the process. Okay, 
Now, computer forensic is also known as digital forensic or electronic forensic. So, what's the definition of a forensic? Uh, the definition is computer forensic refers to the process of confirming, protecting, extracting, archiving, and presenting at a court digital evidence. Okay, so it's a very long process to confirm, to protect. Okay, we mentioned a couple of things. And how do you extract the information out? How do we protect, uh, archive it to protect it? Um, that exists in the computers and related peripherals, such as the uh, router switches or maybe smartphones. The evidence has must be reliable, persuasive, and also it has to be acceptable by the court. So let's look at some of the regulation and standards for digital forensic. Okay, so in the early days, um, back in the 70s and the 80s, uh, so U.S. actually they came out with the uh, the new act, which to deals with uh, eavesdropping of electronic communication. Okay, so U.S. was the uh, was the earlier pioneer that started the uh, the act. Okay, to deal with the uh, digital forensic, and after that. Uh, IETF, which is the uh, Internet Engineering Task Force, so they actually came up with the guideline uh, during the 2000 uh, and somewhere in 2009 and 2020. They came up with the guideline, uh, for example, like understanding cyber crimes, uh, phenomena, challenges, and legal response during the September 2012. So, but they started since uh, 2002. And what about China? So in China, uh, China actually came out pretty late, and uh, so in 2005, they actually only started the uh, the electronic data identification rules for public security authorities, and to came out with some act. Okay, so these are some of the the years and the the act, and after that, the uh, ISO, International Organization of Standardization. Uh, in short, we call the ISO. So they also came up with the ISO standards of the uh, guideline for identification, collection, acquisition, and preservation of digital evidence. Somewhere in October 2012, that was like a month after the uh, ITF came up with the uh, guideline. Okay, so these are actually some of the standards, which is uh, is actually recommended for any companies that to to follow. The uh, regulations, okay, or maybe some of the guidelines. So, what is the status and the trend of the digital uh, forensic? Okay, so currently, uh, so the status for China is that uh, China's was a late uh, adopter for computers, and therefore, the relevant laws and regulation are insufficient. Okay, so academic research on cybercrime mainly focus on its characteristics, preventive measures and also the impact on the people. So forensic technologies are no longer sufficient to combat cyber crimes or to protect a network information security. So the solution is that China must independently develop computer forensic tools and software that can meet the specific requirement and comprehensive check computers and network system. Okay, so this is the status of uh, uh, China. And what about the trend? Okay, the trend, um, such as the um, and machine learning, neural network, data mining, information security technologies into forensic technologies, and also specialization, automation of forensic tools, uh, are starting to to emerge. More and more tools, forensic tools, are now available in terms of hardware and software, and uh, sufficient information reserved during the network protocol design potential forensic activities.